In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at your last little project here. And what you're going to be doing is creating a Word document with compiler errors that you're going to be creating by changing things. So we've got a variable and a function and a typical function event listener pair to deal with. And we're going to create some very typical errors that you're going to see. The very first error that we're going to create is we're going to change our variable and our, our trace to be different. So actually, let me go back. I actually want to change this so it's uppercase R, so it's something that's not a keyword it doesn't understand. And if I do control enter now, you'll see that it actually comes up with an error. It says 1061 syntax error expected a definition keyword. So it's typically something that we have not named right, something that was close to a keyword, but we haven't used it. Now, if we right click, we have three options. We can go to the source, we can uh, copy the description and we can copy the source. If we go to the source it will show us where that that error came from. Um, the other thing is if we copy it we can go to a Word document or something like that and paste that in there um, so that then we can add some notes about it. And What I'd like you to do is copy in the errors as they um, happen and to to put in some notes about how that error was created and what you want to do to check for how to fix those errors in the in the future. So let's take that back to an actual keyword. The next thing we're going to do is change the variable so that we get a different name down here. You'll notice that we have var my name with lowercase and then another one with uppercase and if we test this you'll see 1120 access of undefined property my name. Now this is one of the most common um, errors that you're going to get and it means that you have um, used something and it's not correct named. Uh, the, the name is not correct. For example if I go down and change my event listener and I change the um, button from sample to sample one and test it I should probably get something very similar access of undefined property sample one button. Now it means that it could be wrong in the code or it could be wrong on the um, button itself and so I just have to make sure that they match. If I wanted to call this sample one and go back to the code whoops let's make sure that we have that code pinned and I want to change that to sample one there'd be no problem if they both match. So now you'll see it works just fine because we do indeed have, oops, let me go to that, there we go, you'll see that the two match. So as long as they match, no problem at all. Now we can also have this with functions, such as, let's see the function here, we have hello world, let's call that hello world one, and see if what will happen. Now it's a little bit different, instead of a 1120, it says 1180, call to a possibly undefined method, hello world one. So that's where it does not understand what it is. Now we can also try and do something else. This is, you'll see this every once in a while. I'm going to try and define this function twice. So I've got it trying to run it twice. And you'll see that it comes up with an error that says 1021 duplicate function definition. And it actually shows me which one is the duplicate when I click on it. Therefore, I can remove that, test again, and see if everything works, and it does. Now, um, one of the things that I should mention is that anytime you have any error in your action script, it will disable the entire script on that entire page, all the script that's in the same block. So it's just something very much to be aware of. One of the things that you might do is if you have something like this that you don't think is an error, and you want to um, kind of disable it, put a space before it and a space after, select all of that, and then use what's called the block comment. And what you want to do is have the block comment start at the space b above and then a space below. And what that does is disable that code, and then you can test it afterwards, and it should be just fine. And then if you know that you don't need the code anymore, you can go ahead and delete it. But for right now, I'd like you to have it in your file so that I know that you've done the work. Now, um, I'm going to do a couple more errors. So let's go on to the next tutorial, and then we'll be finished with errors. All right? Thanks.